Well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for uh, for joining. Thank you to our participants in Western Australia for giving up part of their evening um, to talk about the wonderful Western Australia. Um, so we've got four um, fabulous speakers joining us today. Um, I've got a fair few people joining as we go along. So I'm just going to do a very brief introduction, a bit about us um, and kind of what's going to happen um, this afternoon. And then we can, um, there's going to be question and answer for each of the universities. So any questions, please either put them into the chat. I know some of you have already sent me questions by email, so I'll be asking those to each of our presenters. Um, so a um, bit about us. So I know there's a number of students who have been in touch with us already before, um, but I'll just go over kind of who we are and what we do and, and how we can help you. So Study Options is a completely free service. So we are here to make your life as easy as possible um, in initially kind of researching the universities, researching the courses, and where is going to be the best place for you as a student. But also, I know that we do work with a number of families. I know there's a lot of families um, potentially on this chat today. So again, looking at um, where is going to be the best possible um, location for your families to go. Um, I'm sure the all of the universities will probably mention today, um, but I'll mention it now, that if you are taking your children to Western Australia and you, have, um, and you are studying a master's programme, it is the only state or territory in the whole of Australia that, that where you won't have to pay school fees. So that is a massive, massive saving um, on if you are going to any of the other states or territories. So bear that in mind when you are looking um, to relocate your family to Australia on a student visa. So I'm going to pass over now to Paul from the University of, uh, of Western Australia. Um, Paul, you've got 10 minutes or so. And uh, then we'll do a bit of Q&A and then back to me. You should now be able to share your screen. Paul, we can't hear you. Still can't hear you, Paul. Right, Paul, what I might do, I'll, I'll give you a bit of time to, to sort that out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to, um, to Fahad from, uh, from Murdoch, if that's okay. Sorry, just bear with me while I... Sort all of this out. So Fahad, I'm going to make you the co-host now and you'll be able to share your screen and hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Yep. Can you hear me? Great. So should I share my screen now? All right, uh, let me just briefly introduce myself. My name is Fahad Adnan. I am in country representative from Murdoch University. And I look after Pakistan, Bhutan, Africa, and European markets. It's a pleasure to be here. 
and talk to you guys about how cool Western Australia and Perth as a city is. I'm going to start off with a video. It's an interactive video of the university. So please uh, enjoy the video and then we'll talk about the Perth state as a whole, uh, Perth city and what are the benefits of studying in Perth and what scholarships are available in Murdoch University. Becoming a free thinking university didn't happen by chance. It was what we were built on. It was what our founding father hoped we would be. Free thinking changed us, shaped us, made us who we are today. We saw the crowd, but we chose not to follow it. We made our own. We embraced people from all walks of life. We taught people to think for yourself is to think for the future. We created opportunities. We evolved. We became better. Nothing was left to chance. Free thinking pushed us to be more inclusive, more collaborative. We unlocked opportunities. We recognize that university education should not be reserved for the privileged few. We fought hard. We were first to introduce a flexible admission system. We committed to creativity. We changed so many lives. But we didn't only make students' lives better, we made the world better. New thinking, new ways of approaching things. Free thinking has steered us towards activities that truly matter. We tackled global issues, led the way with renewables, created new places to learn. We collaborated for global pain management. We built a world-class engineering pilot plant, animal hospital, business school, law facility, health clinics. We've graduated thousands upon thousands of free-thinking students, and we're not stopping there. We continue to evolve the way we teach, the way we think, and the ways we progress. We're invested in creating precision medicine, which will change the way we treat diseases as we know it discovering new long-term solutions for renewable energies and developing new strains of crops for different climates and soil conditions. So no one in the world has to go without. Becoming a free thinking university did not happen by chance. It happened because our founders were committed to giving our students the best chance of changing their worlds. And we are too. This is our university. This is free thinking. Hope you liked the video. So first of all, why choose Perth as a study destination in Australia? Perth is capital of Western Australia and Western Australia is area of the biggest state of Australia. Now, there are multiple benefits. Some people think that Perth is, uh, you know, it's, it's categorized as regional city. So it, it's not gonna catch up the pace with big metropolitan cities in Australia like Melbourne or Sydney, which is not true. So in Perth, uh, if you talk about uh, the city, it's a primary hub of industry and banking. Uh, it's the state is the largest iron ore producer in the world. A lot of mining is being done in the state. About 46% of the total Australia's exports are being produced by this state. Uh, if you talk about climate, uh, it's, it's the sunniest city in Australia with 300 days of sunshine. 12,000 kilometers of pristine coastline of, uh, you know, beaches, and we've got 19 beaches within the city. So it's it's a lot of, uh, which are famous for surfing uh, sites. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of tourists, they, they come and explore these areas for, for tourism. It is among the 15 most livable cities in the world, and one of the safest cities ranked, according to different surveys. A lot of sports activities uh, are there to explore. Uh, Perth has got monuments like Optus Stadium, Rec Arena for indoor sports. So there are a lot, there's a lot to explore. The living costs is low if you compare it with other cities in Australia. It's, it's known as to be the cheapest capital of Australia. Average rent prices are 40% lesser than Melbourne and 80% lesser than Sydney. So you can compare the stats that how low the living cost in the city is. Um, students receive the work rights. In 2019, Perth was known to be uh, producing the maximum part-time jobs available in, in the country. So uh, 
uh, the the way so there are a lot of attractions for international students because all these things all these uh, factors impact the decision of a student when they decide to move to a study destination outside the, outside their home country talking about murdoch university it's one of the largest campuses in australia by area it is second established university in perth we've got over 13500 students in in perth campus uh, from 100 different countries so it's it's a very diversified campus there's a lot to learn about from different cultures we've got three campuses one is our main campus which is in perth the other one is in singapore which is um uh, another campus and the third one is in dubai but our main campus is perth campus where we offer more than 200 courses both undergrad and postgrad to our students uh, we've got 81 percent undergrad students and 19 percent graduate students uh, also including research students so uh, this is the brief introduction about murdoch university talking about study areas we've got business and law engineering science, technology, arts and communication, cultural studies, and uh, wet sciences as well. We are top 100 universities, uh, young universities among top 100 young universities as per times. So the rankings are pretty high. We've got five-star teaching ratings uh, for different uh, things like student teacher mix for quality of education, for student satisfaction. So there are a lot of achievements under the belt of the university. Coming towards scholarship, since international borders are closed at the moment for, for Australia, so universities have come up with an option of online studies so that students could not, you know, students should not hold themselves for getting a quality education. For all the students who get admission in Murdoch University and they get themselves enrolled online. They've got an option of load flexibility. They can either enroll themselves in one unit or two units or three or four. So it's it depends upon their choice. For how many number of units or courses they enroll in, they get 40% of scholarship on each unit's tuition fee, which means that, uh, you know, almost at the cost of one unit, they can study two units. So this is only for 2021, where students are studying online and they cannot travel to Australia. When the borders open, we do have our international welcome scholarship that is valued up to $12,000. So when student comes and joins face-to-face -face education, uh, they're gonna get this scholarship too, because uh, it's a scholarship which is divided among the number of semesters and how many courses a student has completed. So if a student has availed online scholarship of 40% and then when he joins face-to-face, -face, he gets uh, this scholarship, which is valued up to the uh, you know amount of $12,000 divided among number of semesters remaining in students' education. So if you have any questions regarding scholarship, I'm happy to answer. Uh, this is all from my side. I tried my best to confine myself within the time frame of 10 minutes. And over to you, Stephen. That's great. Thanks, Fahad. Uh, we don't have any questions that have come through, so I think we're going to um, we're going to move on. But anyone, if you've got any questions, feel free to pop them through the chat, and we can um, we can um, speak about them in the end. I know we've got some very general questions that are, that probably most of our presenters will be answering um, at the end of the session. Um, so next up, we've got Lynn from Curtin University. So Lynn, I will give me a couple of minutes and I will, or well not a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, and I will make you co-host so that you can share your screen as well. Sure. Thanks, Stefan, for inviting us and thanks, Study Options, for really putting up this um, uh, webinar today that we can share a little bit more about our state and also the four different universities can also share with you um, what what each which one of us um, specializes in. Just bring, give me a moment. Let me just check that I am sharing my PowerPoint.
Yep, just checking that the PowerPoint looks okay on your end. All good, Lynn. Yeah, perfect. That's good. So this is just um, thank you so much for um, for for introducing Perth. Uh, we've just got a bit of a skyline of Perth over here to show you as well. Um, Fahad spoke about the beautiful blue skies and the weather and the amount of sunshine that we get here in WA. And um, this is, I guess, a little bit of an example of it. This is a sky bird's eye view of um, um, our CBD area and Elizabeth Key, which is one of the newest additions to our city. So um, of course, if you talk about Perth, you can't leave without showing a picture of a quokka. So there is, um, other than the usual kangaroos and koalas that you see, um, I guess the, the one of the mascots of um, Perth and WA is really um, the lovely quokka that we have um, all throughout Rottnest Island. So when you have the chance to come over to visit us one day, we do hope that you'll be able to um, also capture such a lovely selfie um, with this animal as well. So a little bit um, ad in addition to what Fahad's mentioned about studying in Perth, um, the, the WA government has also um, started diversifying a lot of the, eco um, the WA economy um, away from uh, mineral resources. Of course, that is um, probably always going to be our biggest sector. Um, but we've also looked into developing emerging new sectors, including things like defense, lithium, big data, and tourism as well. And we believe that that will also contribute to quite a fair number of um, new jobs in Western Australia within the next five years. And on top of that, of course, um, Perth has regional classification. So when you choose to study here in Western Australia, you will get three years post-study work rights upon the completion of your program if it's longer than two years. Now, if you choose to study in our Kalgoorlie campus, which is about eight hours away um, from Perth City, that will increase the number of um, post-study work right years to four years um, here, here in Australia after you finish your course. So a little bit about Curtin University. We are an innovative global university with campuses in five countries. Other than the flagship campus here in Western Australia, we've also got campuses in Singapore, Malaysia, Mauritius, Dubai as well. We've got an authentic teaching alert, uh, teaching curriculum and we place a lot of emphasis on the student experience here on campus and online as well. Uh, most importantly, um, we hope that when students study with us, you will benefit from the strong links that we have with industry. And to name a few, we've got um, Cisco that um, looks after Innovation Central here in um, here on our camp on our uh, campus here in Perth, WA. So that is a um, an area where they look into a lot of big data projects. Of course, the um, large engineering companies such as Woodside, uh, Cloud Engineering, they're all. Um, uh, our key partners as well. Um, and also um, on the other hand, um, partners like West Farmers. In terms of rankings, we're ranked in the top 1% of universities in ARW 2021. And I'll talk a little bit more about the, um, about the individual subject rankings later. But what's most important is our commitment to prepare you for the jobs of the future. So regardless of what course you choose to study at Curtin University, we want to prepare you for that career that you um, that you intend to work in 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 a um, in, in in a few years time. So this is a little bit about the um, the uh, QS World University rankings and where Curtin plays among them. So in 2021, we're ranked 207th in the world, but most significantly, our mining and mineral and engineering courses is ranked second in the world, 24th in the world for architecture, second in Australia, and also something that we're very proud of is our graduate employability ranking as well. Now I've spoken about our um, the different campuses that we have, and um, so I'd just like to highlight a bit about the um, number of students that we have on campus. Of course, this are these are pre-COVID numbers. Um, numbers on of uh, students on campus have fallen since um, a lot of our international students are restricted from being able to join us right now. But we do hope that we'll be able to welcome you back um, to our city one day. So we've got about 56,000 students um, enrolled at Curtin University um, across all our different campuses, of which about 26% are international. And this really contributes to um, the different thinking and the culture diversity um, in our classrooms. Um, across our, the universe, the university is divided into four different sections, uh, for, sorry, four different faculties. So we've got the Faculty of Health Sciences, Science and Engineering, um, Faculty of Business and Law, as well as Humanities as well. 
And across these different four different faculties, we teach a variety of programs um, from uh, uh, bachelor programs all the way up to uh, master's and PhD degrees as well. And we do also do offer uh, pathway opportunities if you um, don't meet the entry requirements through our um, partner college, which is Curtin College located on campus. So um, a little bit about our Faculty of Health Sciences, we are the largest, most comprehensive health school in, West, uh, in Australia and the largest interprofessional education um, provider here in WA. We educate more health professionals than any other WA um, tertiary institutions and that's one of the reasons why we've really been able to establish ourselves as a strong brand um, and, uh, for, um, for health science programs. Um, we have strong links in industry and when you choose to study health um, science programs with us, for majority of our health science programs, we do place you um, in different clinical placements so that you can learn on the job as well. I'd just like to highlight two programs that we have here within the faculty, the Master of Nursing Practice. Um, sorry, just one actually, the Master of Nursing Practice. And this is a fast track pathway for students who want to become registered nurses. I'll be happy to have a chat with you or take any um, questions later um, if you're particularly interested in this program. Another faculty that we have, and this is really for the creative minds, um, the Faculty of Humanities, uh, which teaches a range of courses um, all throughout design, TV, film and media, as well as education as well. And the program that I would just like to highlight here is our Master of Teaching program, where we are ranked in the top 100 universities in the world for education. Within this course, you can specialize in three different streams, early childhood education, primary education, or secondary, secondary education. So you do not need to have a background education to get into um, early childhood or primary, um, only if you're uh, choosing to, to um, study secondary education where there will be um, a requirement for you to have a um, relevant um, background. So for this course, once you finish the two-year program, it is a very intensive program because you'll be starting um, placements in classrooms uh, from, from your first um, trimester onwards, for, sorry, from the study period onwards. And upon the um, uh, completion of your program, you will be um, uh, able to register to teach here in WA and across Australia as well. So if you've completed your degree in the UK, you do not need to um, uh, provide any IELTS, uh, IELTS tests for entry into this course. Science and Engineering is our flagship um, um, faculty. We've started off as a WA Institute of Technology and Science and Engineering has always been a backbone um, for the university. Um, so a little bit about why study engineering at Curtin, of course, with our longstanding um, history in teaching um, engineering um, that's one of the one of the things that really set us apart but also our innovative facilities and also the international uh, recognition across different um, accrediting bodies have really um, given us that that advance given our students the advantage so um, of course we do uh, we do teach bachelor's and postgrad programs, but what I wanted to highlight here is our uh, Master of Professional en Engineering, which is um, accredited by Engineers Australia. So depending on um, your background, this could be a two or a three year program for you. And um, as mentioned, because of time, I'm, I'm more than happy to have a chat with you later about um, what your pathway would be into this program. As part of this course, you're also guaranteed 12 weeks of um, exposure to professional engineering practice. So this is guaranteed for international um, students and we will um, help you to help you to be placed in those. Um, you can see on the next slide, the different majors that we offer. We also, we do um, the traditional areas of engineering such as chemical, civil, electrical, but also um, specific to us um, areas such as subsea engineering, um, telecommunications networking, and also of course, mining and metallurgical as well. And these majors are also reflected within our undergraduate programs in the Bachelor of Engineering. I'll skip through the next few slides as I'm conscious of time and bring you across to the last, um, last but the largest faculty here in um, Curtin University. So the Faculty of Business and Law is the largest um, uh, faculty within our university. And just an update on um, who we are, the Curtin Business School is now Equus accredited as well. So if you're heading back to, um, to Europe to work after you finish your program, that is um, something that is quite valuable. So now we're happy to announce that we're triple accredited. So we've got Equus, EFMD, and also AACSB accreditation as well. 
Now across um, our faculty, we do teach into quite a few different areas. So accounting, business and law, economics and finance, management, marketing and supply chain as well. And of course, sitting across this, we also do have our MBA programs. So um, I'll be happy to have a chat with you after, uh, as mentioned, um, about the different pathways that we offer and also um, the, the different programs within these areas as well. That's it from me. Um, with scholarship options, because we're finalizing our scholarships for 2022 at the moment, um, I can provide you with information of what if you're, if you're choosing to start with us um, in second semester this year. So we do have uh, the Curtin International Merit Scholarship, which covers 25% of your first year tuition fee if your course is two years or longer. On top of that, if you're studying online with us, um, in the coming semester as well, you will get a starter support scholarship of um, up to two thousand dollars if you're holding uh, if you're a holder of the merit scholarship. But because that is um, depending on your um, education background, um, I think it will be better for us to have a chat separately after this. So that's it from me. Um, thank you so much for listening to um, my short presentation on the university. There's so much more that I'd like to share with you. Um, but just a little bit about the um, about who we are as well. This is a parting shot of the city. And um, just on the back of, for, for the Star Wars fans out there, um, on the back of, of May the 4th, the, um, there was a production studio which did a really good video on um, that showcases our city and how beautiful it is. So I'll put the link over in the chat as well. And if you're interested to have a look after this event, you can pop on there on YouTube and um, have a watch. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you, Lynn. Um, seeing all those images makes me desperate to get back to Perth. It's been, it's been a while. Um, okay, the only question that we had from you was actually related to your Master of Nursing program, which obviously you mm -hmm. have covered elsewhere. And I, I know we have a number of students who have applied for it in the past. And I, I know we've got a couple, couple, couple of offers out there at the moment. So I don't know if you want to add anything more to, to, to that program. Um, sure. At all. Yep. Yeah, so the Master of Nursing practice, just in addition, I know most of the UK students would ask whether they would still need to take, sit for an IELTS, and the answer is yes, you would still need to sit for an IELTS to, um, because that's required for registration um, with the Nurses Board, so you do need to take the IELTS with an uh, achieve 7.0 in all bands. Um, alternatively, you can take a, PT, um, a PTE test or a TOEFL test and achieve the similar scores. Um, another good news for the program as well is that we now have two intakes for the course. So um, I, uh, other than the July intake, we also open for February as well. Um, the course is strictly competitive, so you would have to meet all the conditions on the um, before we are able to issue an offer for you. So um, do speak to Stefan, he knows our admissions requirements and the procedure really well. So study options will be able to help you out through all of that. Great. Well, thank you, Lynn, and uh, enjoy your evening. Um, Thank you. Next up, we have got uh, Marco from Edith Cowan. So I will just allow you to share your screen, Marco. And it's over to you. All right. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Good. All right. Sharing the screen right now. Just a sec. There we go. All right, um, I'm just gonna play a quick ECU 30 second intro and then we'll talk more. There is where you are and there is where you want to get to. In between, you need a bridge. Bridges can be technology, knowledge, connections. ECU is the bridge between go it kind of ends in london but i know my it's the other way around for students from the uk it starts from possibly with a direct flight from the uk and uh, then ends here in perth but there are some impressions of of ecu there so so that's me and kaya is a greeting in the indigenous language here in perth um we're very proud of that heritage here um, that's me on one of the beaches down south, uh, not too far away from Perth. So um, Fahad and Lynn already really covered nicely what Perth offers as a destination. So I'm not going to talk about um, those things, but um, I'll just show you briefly um, 
some of my sort of um, personal personal favorites, my personal experiences, and uh, that gives you a bit more a bit more expression. So one of the things that I did um, fairly soon after I moved here, I bought a bicycle, and I've been most mornings or on the weekends I go cycling, and that's something that I really recommend to everyone. If you've got the, um, um, you know, if you are interested in cycling, uh, if you like the outdoors. Um, Definitely Perth is one of the best cities in the world. So you can see kind of things like that on your morning cycles along the river or along the ocean. Um, that's the view from my balcony where I live. And that kind of shows you the incredible sunsets over the Indian Ocean here in Perth, um, the sunniest city, the sunniest major city in Australia. Um, that's right in front of Perth. Um, the, the whole area is really well known for, um, for the amazing beaches. And right in front of Perth, we've got an island called Rotness, which is kind of our playground. Um, 62 beaches, just like half an hour ferry right away, or a bit longer, depending where you live from. And again, a great island for, for cycling. So that's one of my favorites around here in Perth. Now, if you go a little bit further away, that picture is from Margaret River. It's famous for really good wines, um, but I think it's incredible for the, for the wonderful nature as well. That's only three um, hours south of Perth. If you go a little bit further up, actually quite a lot further up to the northern part of the Western Australia, um, you'll get to Broome. Um, and that's me cycling uh, on beaches of Broome. And then if you go a little bit further up from there, you get kind of this like Uluru on the beach, like the red rock magic of Western Australia. So just a few photos, just to kind of show you a little bit of the incredible landscape and the outdoor lifestyle that Perth um, offers. Now, that kind of looks like a, a Game of Thrones movie set, doesn't it? Um, but it's actually our campus, ECU, Edith Cowan University. That's our main building. So we are a very modern young university. We established in 91. So this year is actually our 30th anniversary. Now, just to show you quickly our facilities, we're going to do a quick flight from London to Perth. There is a direct flight. Uh, it will resume. It's one of the, the most popular flights for Qantas, the Australian airline. Um, so there's actually direct service from London to, um, to Perth. It's the only city in Australia that is connected to Europe. Um, so we're going to do a quick flight. It's not going to take 18 hours. It will just take uh, one and a half minutes or so. So this will kind of give you a little bit of impressions uh, of what the ECU main campus looks like. We're going to start from London. Just some brief uh, drone footage of our main campus over there. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to show you some more images and I'll just kind of explain a little bit more about ECU and what the campus experience is like. Um, so that is the Game of Thrones kind of looking main entrance and you kind of enter under the glass bridge and then the campus opens up in front of you. Um, our main square just goes, goes to show the, the open space and you'll see in these images that uh, like ECU, like, like many, many Australian universities, many, many universities on this call as well, they are not, not sort of typical sort of European style traditional universities, so very modern like you've heard from my colleagues, um, the study experience here is very, very hands-on, very much industry engaged as well. That's our um, um, kind of like a student hub where we've got four levels of student support all centralized in one building. Um, some of the modern facilities, and this is what I mean by the industry link. So that's, for example, in our School of Business and Law, that's basically our trading, ro trading room. It's, uh, it's done by Bloomberg, the news agency. And you basically do real life trading just without using the, the real money. So it can't get more hands on than that. Um, and basically no matter what you study, whether it's nursing, whether it's teaching, whether it's cybersecurity, you'll get that real experience at ECU. I mentioned cyber, that's, um, that's our cyber facilities. We are actually the Australian Cybersecurity Research Center. So we have a government funding for that. And we really are like the hub of cyber research and cyber studies, not only in Australia, but around the world. Uh, there's been a lot of recognition for that. And I think by the time I end my call, we will have around the world something like 60,000 um, cyber breaches uh, 
data breaches rather. So that's how massive, massive uh, the issue is and why there's so, so much demand around the world. Um, some of our happy students on, on campus. Um, and we've got also outdoor cinema, um, something that you'd rarely get at a university. So in summer, uh, along our sort of, we call that Joondal of Pines, um, we, we open up a cinema that is open to the public as well. Now, ECU, so we are named after Edith Cowan. Um, this is a very special year, actually, 2021. So it's our 30th anniversary, but it's also the 100th anniversary um, since Edith Cowan was elected into any Australian um, parliament. So she was the first woman to enter parliament in Australia and ECU is the only university in Australia named after a female. So we are very, very proud of, of that background. Um, we put a lot of emphasis on the student experience and teaching. So we've actually been ranked number one uh, public university uh, in Australia for teaching quality uh, for some years now in row. And that's something that we are very, very proud of. And, and that's the position that we want to maintain. I'm gonna show you a quick video of what a difference amazing teaching uh, can make. And um, here's one of our graduates, one of our alumni. And I've got a feeling you'll recognize this guy. It's so fantastic to reunite with the people that matter most to you in your life. And I'm gonna do that today. And you may be wondering why I'm in a stairwell in the back of a theater in downtown New York City. Well, I'm here to surprise one of those people who do matter to me most, Chris Edmund, my old acting teacher. I'm so excited today because MasterCard has brought him from Australia here to New York City under the guise of doing a masterclass with some aspiring young actors. He has absolutely no idea that I am here. He's right here behind this wall. So why don't we go and give him a priceless surprise? Come on. Um, personable, attractive young man. Do you mind young if young I interrupt? Young. No, not for <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long time, it's so a thrill. I am here to honour this man who, it's 20 years, mate. Yeah, it's 20 man. years since I graduated. And uh, how long were you at the school before? 30. 30 years. And I have been working for 20 years and there is not a day, and I have to let you know what your teaching has meant to me. Because oh, I would never be here in my career without you and Lyle and the other teachers at the West Australian Academy of Performing Arts. I want others to have an opportunity like I had. So with MasterCard, we have created a Chris Edmonds Performing Arts Scholarship for the West Australian Academy of Performing Arts. So we're going to give opportunities to other students. And this is kind of the best surprise I could possibly have. <laughs> Obviously, Hugh Jackman. He's actually a graduate from uh, the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts, which is part of ECU. And not all of our students will get a star in Hollywood. But definitely, all ECU students will get that red carpet treatment and that incredible support and teaching quality, like Hugh Jackman had at ECU. Um, I'll just quickly show you the study areas. I will not go into the details, but um, just to give you a snapshot idea, we've got eight different teaching schools. Um, for the students from the UK, we typically have students in our School of Nursing, School of Teaching, um, increasingly in cyber, and quite a lot for, for our um, master's programs in the, in the business school as well. Um, those are kind of the, the, the uh, four most popular areas for the students to, to study options from the UK. Um, we've got a, a World Ready Scholarship, which is 20% for the on-campus studies. Obviously, as we've said, borders are closed. We will continue that um, into next year, subject to final confirmations, but uh, that should be fine to go, to go ahead. So that's basically for both undergrad and postgrad studies. But while the borders are closed, we do have a, a wonderful range of uh, courses that you can actually start online and then continue on campus. And there is a 30% scholarship on those. And 
we really, really encourage, if, if, your, if your situation allows, we do encourage students to start online. It actually gives you a bit of a soft landing then once you then come physically to Perth. You already know the university systems, you know, you, you, you've got your head around all that academic stuff. So it makes your arrival here much, much easier if you have actually commenced online. Um, what I also recommend you to check, uh, just uh, put in Google 101 reasons to choose ECU. It's a, it's a really, really cool microsite that gives you kind of like bite-sized cool things about ECU. Um, a lot of the things that, you know, even 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 is news to, to a lot of our team members uh, at ECU. So lots of, lots of cool facts about the university. And really, um, study options um, definitely are ECU specialists. Um, they have helped many, many students start their journey at ECU. Um, Sarah actually from from study options visited Perth and visited ECU a um, couple of couple of years ago. So yeah, so they really know ECU inside out and really the, the whole process. I mean, I mean, we've discussed that already, but you know, especially if you come with the family, um, those guys really, really know how to make the journey smooth. So you are definitely, definitely in good hands with study options. And obviously see you as well once you get here. That's all from me, Stefan. Brilliant, thank you, Marco. Um, always great to listen to your presentation and see Hugh again. Uh, it's always good. Likewise. Um, so I've got a question that was actually emailed. Um, actually, there's one question on the chat, um, but another question that was emailed in relation to actually the same program. So um, looking at applying for your Master of Cybersecurity program, what are the job opportunities in Western Australia and in Australia as a whole? Fantastic question. Um, huge. Huge opportunities. Um, we have, um, well, first of all, on campus, we have we are one of the few few universities in the world that has our own cybersecurity startup on campus. So we actually employ a fair few students on campus as well. Um, but basically, the you know, if we talk globally, um, there's um, I think the latest amount is two point three um, million shortfall for professionals. Um, and in Australia, 20% um, of, the, uh, of the positions that they advertise, they don't actually get filled. Um, so we actually have massive, massive demand. And, and ECU is really, really known for the cyber research, cyber teaching. We have um, two of our academics. They also work part-time at Interpol. So they are one of the six Interpol experts, uh, experts around the world. So there's really that specialization. So the companies, they know that ECU gives them the real life skills with the latest facilities. And um, yeah, it's it's quite incredible. Like we don't have that in any other study area than cyber that there's such interest from employers to get our fresh graduates. So yeah, huge opportunities. And, and as I said, the um, yeah, cyber crime, it's happening all the time. Like. We think that cybercrime is only like between governments, you know, like major, like, I don't know, Russia hacking into Hillary Clinton's emails or something like that. It's happening in our devices. It's, you know, if you've got Bluetooth, you know, your children's toys can be hacked. So it's a global issue. Great. Thank you, Marco. Um, and then the other one from Stu, um, and I'm happy to take this, Marco. Um, how long is the postgrad visa following the masters? I'm looking at the cybersecurity masters for July 2022. Um, so, in, in terms of the post-study work visa, so a couple of things to bear in mind, you would need to study for two years, study full time for two years. Um, at the end of that, you are eligible to then apply for what is called the um, graduate, uh, graduate visa, the subclass 485. That will initially allow a period of two years. If you have then studied in certain areas, that can be extended or a, a, another application could go in for a further one or two years. So Perth comes under the two plus one. So you would get three years of a post-study work visa at the end. Um, in terms of pathway, Stu, I'm thinking you're probably asking about um, migration pathway. Um, I'm not a migration agent, but I can put you in touch with someone. But yeah, if, if we speak later on today or, or tomorrow, we can have a chat about what the pathway might look like from student visa subclass 500 through 485 out into other uh, other potential visas. Um, and I've seen you just asked another question. Um, there's, there, we're always going to have a border question, guys. Um, you mentioned the borders are closed. If I wanted to enroll for Feb 2022 or July 2022, would I start it online and will I be able to commence it on campus? Not really a question that anyone can answer at the moment, Marco, but do you want to give your view? 
<laughs> I, yes, absolutely. Um, and I can kind of talk on behalf of all the universities here. So we are working on a united front um, together with Study Birth. So Study Birth is the umbrella uh, organization here in Perth, and then Study Birth works with Western Australian government. So we are working on a on a sector wide plan for for the safe return of international students. Um, so yes, um, we are obviously anticipating border opening for 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 next year. So you know. It's, it's not going to happen this year, um, but the vaccination uh, rollout in a lot of countries is very promising. Um, Australia started promising, kind of slowed down, but but Australia will get there. You know, we have fairly small population and and good good health health structure, so uh, we'll be fine. Um, I mean, it's really hard. It's hard to also know the logistics because there could potentially be um, a rival quota for example, in, in the early days, but what, for example, we are doing at ECU. So we are um, grouping our students into what we call priority groupings and our current, which basically then means continuing students, they will have the priority. So if you have started with us online, you'll be among the first ones. If it's within our decision, you'll be among the first ones that we will be bringing over if it comes to that, you know, point that we actually need to make decision on who, who can uh, come. Ho hopefully it won't, hopefully it won't. Hopefully there won't be any heavy heavy border on arrivals at that stage. Right. But as I said, um, there, there are benefits in online study. I know that the thought is not, that's not what probably a lot of you have been planning for years, but it does have the benefits. Like a lot of the workplaces are increasingly digital. And, you know, by starting online, you kind of, you probably start in a kind of environment that you may end up working in anyway. Brilliant. Thank you, Marco. Um, and now we're going to try Paul from University of Western Australia again, and hopefully we've sorted out his sound problem. Um, I don't think any kind of any Zoom meeting is uh, is complete without a uh, without some kind of issue. So over to you, Paul, and fingers crossed I'm going to be able to hear you. Um, yes, I've had to put the sound through my phone. Um, what, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. Yeah, okay. I had to do the sound through my phone. My microphone has decided it doesn't want, uh, uh, doesn't want to work. So um, I'm just sharing my screen now. Uh, okay. Um, Basically, uh, the University of Western Australia is the oldest university in the state of Western Australia and it's the sixth oldest uh, university overall in Australia. And uh, we've established in 1911, so we've been going for over 100 years. I just want to play a short video of, uh, with our campus so you can see how beautiful our campus is. It's been um, uh, advised by TripAdvisor as a, the, as a place to visit in Perth, even if you're not studying. So uh, this was taken from a drone and it's an aerial view of the campus and, a, and the campus is right beside the Swan River. As you can see there, it's a very green campus and uh, students all uh, uh, certainly all like walking around and taking in the, the aesthetics of the campus. Now, as I mentioned before, the um, university was founded in 1911. We took our first students in, in 1913. Um, we have a structure of 22 schools. We've just abandoned the faculty structure and we now have a, a structure of 22 schools. And these schools comprise of uh, schools like architecture, business, engineering, physics, math, uh, medicine, dentistry, agriculture, uh, chemical and biomolecular sciences, and yeah, education, and a few others. Um, we're a, it's a vibrant university com uh, community. We have something like 27,000, the 2019 figures, we had 27,000 students. Uh, comprising of 17,000 undergraduate, 8,000 postgrad, and 2,000 research students. Our undergraduate model has changed a little bit. It has been based on the Bologna model, 
with five broad undergraduate courses. Now, we're still adhering to that sort of, but we're now expanding the, the offerings a bit. Now, these are um, the biomedical science, art, science and commerce degree, uh, a, a more generic degree, and you can do over 70 different majors within those degrees. So there's a, there's a very broad spectrum there of what students can study. In 2021, we've uh, introduced courses, bachelor's courses in artificial intelligence, um, uh, computing and data science and international cyber security, but we're also introducing um, uh, robotics and automation, business, music, uh, philosophy, politics and economics, and environmental design. And in 2022, there is more to come. Uh, we're introducing a whole new range of courses. Uh, we've also decided that um, as a, a new string to the bow, we would introduce a four-year combined degree a uh, combined bachelor of masters. Now, most of these are in the science and business areas, as you can see there. Now, these are also going to be changed a little bit for 2022. There's going to be far more of them added. So it's a really exciting development where students can get a combined bachelor of masters in four years. So um, that's, a, that's a really, really good option for some students. We also have scholarships for high-performing students. Uh, there's four different levels. Uh, five, seven, nine, and twelve thousand dollars per year. Um, There's based on academic merit. So for students that are doing um, A levels, for example, uh, two Bs and a C will give you five thousand. Two As and a B will give you seven thousand. Three As will give you nine thousand, and three A stars will give you twelve thousand. Now this is per year. So for an undergraduate degree uh, for three years, uh, or the combined bachelor of masters for four years. Um, it's actually quite a significant discount when you take it over that period of time. For our uh, postgraduate students, um, we have the same four levels. So basically students need a, um, uh, a weighted average mark of between 70 and 74, an honours 2A for 5,000, uh, 75 to, to 79 for uh, an honours 2A for 7,000, 80 to 85 an honours 1 for 9,000, and 85 plus honours one for $12,000 per year. Now, we also have sporting scholarships for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. So if you think you're a, um, a pretty good sportsman, you can always apply for our sporting scholarships. Now, these uh, scholarships that I've just mentioned, our Global Excellence Scholarships, you don't have to apply for them. Once you submit your application, if you fit that uh, mark range, you'll get the scholarship. So you know, there's no extra application. Our admissions team will automatically assess you for that. For the Sporting Excellence Scholarship, uh, you will have to submit an application or a sporting CV, which will be assessed by our uh, sports association. Now, the levels are the same as far as for undergraduate and postgraduate. Um, it's based on the scholarship amount. It's based on your academic study, not on your sport. Whether you're eligible for the scholarship in the first place will be based on your sport. So uh, just bear that in mind. In order, the sporting criteria that we need um, is that uh, you must play, you must be, um, you, sorry, what you need to do for your sporting CV is you must nominate sport that you're interested in, your outline your performances, any awards that you've won, uh, representations where you've represented the national team, the state team. Um, or uh, underage, national underage level, whatever, and that all gets assessed um, and the sports association will select whether you get the scholarship or not. The scholarship includes not only just includes the um, fee discount, but it also includes um, uh, professional coaching. Uh, you can get time off to compete um, uh, in events where you're representing the university. You can also get um, uh, time off for... Um, uh, training and training camps and things like that. Um, so it's a, it's a very, a very good um, scholarship. Now the University of Western Australia has uh, built its reputation on research and it wins more uh, funding for research per capita than any other university in the country. Um, bearing in mind our enrolment of students is only 27,000. It's not big by um, uh, some other standards. Um, but we have performed exceptionally well in research. 
Um, the man in the bottom right hand corner of the screen there is Professor Barry Marshall. Uh, he won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2005 for detecting a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, which if any of your relatives have had um, stomach ulcers, they'll know exactly what it is. And there is also a theory that uh, this Helicobacter pylori is responsible for some of the nastier gastrointestinal cancers as well. And that's what he's working on at the moment. Uh, Professor Marshall was born in Kalgoorlie, did his medicine degree at UWA, um, and did all his research for uh, the Nobel Prize at UWA. Um, and he's also uh, still lectures to, to students. So uh, if you're lucky and you're doing the right subject, you, you might get a lecture from him at some stage. Now, the University of Western Australia is ranked in the top 100 universities in the world. Uh, there's two big ranking systems that uh, most universities use. One, first one is the ARWU, and UWA is ranked 85th in the world in that ranking, and also top 50 in um, those list of subjects there. Now, there's an, that's an impressive list of subjects, and we're also first in Australia in a lot of areas. The other ranking system um, that people tend to use is the QS ranking system, and we're ranked 92nd in the world for that. And again, we're ranked top 50 in, in quite a number of subjects. Um, the university has accommodation, uh, five residential colleges, which are uh, just across the road from the university, but there's a tunnel under the highway, so you don't even have to cross the road. Um, you can get packages where you can get three meals a day. Each room is fully furnished. Um, it's uh, wireless, free or wireless internet throughout the, the colleges. And there's a, quite a healthy um, social and sporting activities between the colleges. So for students um, in their first year, it's actually quite a good option because you get to meet so many people and uh, you'll never feel lonely while you're in the college because there's always someone who wants to do something. Now the campus itself, as you saw from the video at the start, it's a very beautiful uh, campus and a very vibrant student life. I mentioned that um, TripAdvisor said that it was a top university worth traveling for, even if you are not enrolled as a student, um, it's well worth seeing. One of the, the aspects of university life is the student experience, and we're really conscious that it gives students a, a positive experience. It's not just about books and marks and uh, the academic side, there's also a social side. And with that, we have over 100 different affiliated clubs and societies that cover quite a lot of different areas. There's uh, quite a lot of different sporting clubs. There's quite a lot of different national clubs. Um, there's um, um, a lot of cultural clubs. Um, uh, and there's really, I understand there's even a chocolate society for people who like eating chocolate. So it covers just about everything. Um, and also, we have exchange agreements with uh, something like 160 different universities around the world. So international students can go on exchange. If you're doing, say, a, a Master of Commerce uh, or a bachelor, say, a bachelor of Commerce, uh, after your first year, you're eligible for either a one semester or two semester exchange. If you're doing a post two year postgraduate work, it would probably be only a one semester exchange. But it's open to international, international students. So in 2019, we had just over 27,000 students, uh, just on 17,000 were undergrad did over 8,000 postgrads, 2,000 research, and we had did over 6,000 international students. Um, so that gives you an idea of the percentage of the enrollment for, for international students, a bit over 20%. Now, being around so long, we also had some impressive um, alumni. I mentioned Professor Barry Marshall before. Uh, we have also had Bob Hawke, former Prime Minister of Australia, uh, was a graduate of UWA. Dr. Bodhi Ono, a former Vice President of Indonesia. Um, Sean Can won an Oscar for Best Short Animated Feature a few years ago. Uh, Sir Rod Eddington, a CEO, former CEO of British Airways. Lee Hunter, who, who was, um, uh, used to work for YouTube. Uh, Elizabeth Shaw, the Australian Youth Representative of the United Nations. And uh, Simon Kadich, former, former Australian Test Cricketer. All these people are graduates of UWA. And you can see all the different fields that they've excelled at. So this gives you an idea of the quality across the board for the University of Western Australia. Now I have a, one short video here, it takes about a minute to finish up, and it's Professor Barry Marshall talking about his time at UWA.
first go to the University of Western Australia, they knew it was the number one university. I didn't know how it compared nationally. I found that out much later. And I can see how demand the University of Western Australia graduates were. A UWA degree set me up for a fantastic life in practice in medicine. Because of the perfect mental space practice, the UWA experience of some unexpected opportunities that they'd ultimately get to from. I made a lot of great friends in the university. All smart people with different interests and lifestyle. I think we have to do that. Most of the medicine is about patient interaction, also research and the I think the special building for me on campus is the university library. You just spend so much time here. Of course, there's a coffee shop underneath it, so you can take a break. And on many occasions, many weeks, I used to spend days and days in that library. Okay, uh, that's basically the end of the, the presentation. I'd like to thank you for um, uh, your attentiveness. Um, there's just some contact details there if you wish to, to contact us. Uh, but thank you again for your uh, attentiveness, and hopefully there was some information there that um, you find useful. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Um, and thank you to all our presenters. The only question I had from you, Paul, was actually about um, scholarships, which you covered so well anyway. I mean, you know, a number of our students have always been um, very successful in, in getting those, those scholarships, which is great. Um, right, so just as a way of summing up, I'm going to give you each, each of you a very, very brief moment to tell everyone what is the best thing, the one best thing about living in Perth or Western Australia. I'm going to start with you, Lynn. And just because I turned on my video first, <laughs> I must <laughs> I must say really the diversity of people that are here in um, in WA. I've really learned so much just interacting with um, the different nationalities that gather here and choose to call WA their new home. Um, yeah, I think that for me would be the best thing about choosing to study in Western Australia. Fantastic, uh, Fahad. Next up. Yeah, uh, what I like best about Perth is is a lesser commute time. It's everything is easily accessible. There's no you know uh, heavy traffic unlike other large metropolitan cities in in the world. So Perth is a smaller, compact city. Everything is in reach. You can go anywhere you want within very very less time, and everything is beautiful here, including people. Fantastic, Marco. Um, I would probably say. Out, well, I think you saw it in my photos. Outdoor lifestyle. Um, I'm from Finland originally, so I like that space and nature. And um, in Perth, I can get exactly that. Um, obviously, very different kind of nature to Finland. But if I want the big city attractions, they are like Fahad said, they are they are they are nearby as well. Um, so yeah, so definitely the 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 weather uh, outdoors uh, and the lifestyle, whether it's cycling or Sunday afternoon beers or a barbecue, absolutely okay. incredible. I think that was I think that was three things, Marco. But I'll let you off. Uh, oh, sorry, it was like seventeen sentences. Apologies. <laughs> right away. Um, uh, lastly, over to you, Paul, please. Well, I grew up in Sydney and I moved to Perth thirteen years ago, um, so I can identify with this. Um, Perth is just well spread out. It's, a, it's an easy place to get around. Uh, it's it, you don't feel crowded like you do in the big cities. It is a sensational place to live. Very much an outdoor lifestyle. Um, your winery is not far away. You've got lots of sporting events. You've got the beaches. Um, it's just the whole lifestyle. It, it, it's great. Fantastic. Well, thank you. And thank you again to all of our speakers, presenters today or there, there this evening. Um, thanks everyone else for logging on. Um, this video is going to be um, available 
um, via our website in the next uh, week or so. Um, just a couple of kind of things to reiterate. So um, for those that are joined a little bit later, the study options is the official representative for all four of these universities um, in Western Australia, plus, plus many more. Um, so we are the kind of the application process. So applications, any applications to Australia or New Zealand, in fact, um, would come through us. You will, your first port of contact will typically be myself um, or Sarah. Um, give us a wave. There we go. Um, and we will be here to kind of guide you through the whole process um, from application through to I'm I'm the I'm the self-appointed visa guy. So anything visa related or visa checking, um, I will deal with. Um, but you'll deal with various members from our team. So uh, we've got all your details. So we'll be in touch um, over the next couple of days. Um, but any questions or if you've got yeah any any want any more information about particular courses or universities or visas or post work visas, then, then please get in contact with us uh, before we reach out to you. Thanks again. Thanks again to all of our speakers. Have a good evening and um, look forward to seeing you in person in Perth in the not so distant future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Bye.